Right, welcome to the Marine Fitness Mobility Overhaul video and in this one we're going for a little bit of everything. If you're trying to improve your exercise, if you're trying to improve the way you move or just life in general, follow along live, it's going to take roughly an hour. From that, if you find anything that's particularly difficult or any movements that you struggle with, you really feel stiff and tight, extract them, throw them into your warm-up, do them little and often and you'll get better. I'm not expecting you to be doing an hour's this every single day of the week. If you do, hell, that's brilliant, but if not, Take the ones that you struggle with and try to get better at them over the space of time. Apart from that, we're getting straight into it. Let's get the show on the road. Right, okay. So first of all, all we're going to be doing is starting off with a few generic ones. You'll probably know them. I don't know the names. I don't do names, but we're going to go for it anyway. This is a good posterior chain stretch. And what I mean by that, posterior chain, all the muscles that run up the back end of your body, okay? So we should be getting everything on this one. It's a good one to do in the morning. It's a good one to start off before you start warming up. And all we're doing, we're just simply walking out. Plant the hands solidly in front of you. It's better if they're closer together, but this is where you have to play around with the position of everything, okay? So I want you to pay, pay attention to the position of your feet because the wider they are or the narrower they are is going to affect how this stretch feels. Where you put your hands, it doesn't really matter. But what we're trying to do is push the weight through our heels. We're trying to push the knees back. I'm trying to push the hips up and back. And of course, I'm trying to stretch out that upper body as well. Okay, now for the most part, a lot of people when they first start this one, they'll probably find it quite hard to get completely straight. Okay, you might find it pretty damn stiff. If you do, that's fine. Okay, you're just trying to go a little bit better each time. And then I'm going to come up. And I'm going to come down, and the only point of contact here is my hands and the tips of my toes, okay? So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm pushing through, but we're going to do three of these, so don't push it too far too soon. If you're feeling a bit of tightness in the lower back, take your time with it. Slowly just introduce more range. As we're going through these basic ones, I'll talk you through what the hell we're doing here. Okay, so I'm lifting back up. This time I'm going a little bit further, okay? Now, while we're doing these pretty basic stretches, I'll talk you through the whole point in this today. So we're trying to mobilize and we're trying to stretch out and improve your flexibility. Okay, so it's up to you to be proactive within the stretches. I can't make you do that. I want you to take the stretch as far as you can. You're constantly trying to take it further and further and further throughout the time that we're holding it. But also, within the position, try to maneuver yourself around, okay? Get out the mindset of static stretching when we're just holding a position. Sure, there's some of them that we can only hold one position in, but for a lot of these, we can move around within the position. And by moving around, I don't mean easing in and out. I mean trying to enhance it. Okay, I'm coming back down again. So all I'm ever trying to do in these positions is try to enhance the stretch any way I can. And everybody's different, okay? So think of it simply as you're just trying to discover your own body, okay? You're trying to find little pockets of tightness that might be specific to you, okay? And that's why it's no use me telling you to move this way and that way, you're gonna feel this, because you might not. Everybody's different. But get in the mindset, I'm coming back up, get in the mindset of when I'm going into this stretch and every other stretch, I'm taking it to the point in which I feel it's quite hard to go any further. I'm focusing on my breathing, I'm relaxing my breathing, big breath in, big breath out. As a result, while I'm holding that stretch, my muscles will ease off a little bit and I can keep going a little bit further. Okay, so this is the third one we're doing. This is where I'm really gonna try and take it as far as I can. And you can see, I'm trying to push my chest through and my head through my arms. I'm trying to push the weight. I can add a little bit of torso twist in. That's gonna help stretch out the back a little bit more. Good, and then I'm gonna walk the hands in gradually and stand up tall. Okay, so that's a good one to throw in any time. It's a good one just for decompressing the spine after we're dead hangs. But again, I'd recommend this anytime. If you're sitting down and you're just feeling a little bit tight, jump straight into it. Right, grab a mat if you've got one. If you don't, then too bad. All I'm gonna do here now is just try to mobilize the spine, okay? So like I say, today, this session, we're trying to overhaul the full body, okay? So we've picked the best ones for each area of your body. So we're starting from the top, working our way down. So I'm getting onto all fours. You can see my knees below my hip. Okay, I'm not sitting away back here. And my chest's over my hands, spread out, shoulder width apart. All I'm doing here is gonna start extending the back up. And again, you're not trying to break your back, 
but you're trying to stretch it out, okay? You're trying to stretch all those muscles out in the spine. Now, I encourage you to lift your head up, but obviously I can't go too far, because otherwise, otherwise, I can't talk. And then I'm gonna go the other way now. So I want you to push the hands into the ground. I want you to push the upper back up, but also think about the lower back. Bring that with you as well. And I'm pushing and I'm stretching and I'm pulling the shoulder blades apart, stretching out all those muscles. And then I'm coming back down again. Okay, so it's only brief holds, but just like I said on the last stretch, I'm taking it as far as I can and I'm trying to take it further throughout the time that I'm holding it. I'm not just taking it to a point and going, oh well, this is all right, isn't it? No, okay, I'm trying to take it further, make it better. So I'm going again, up. And once you start to feel maybe that initial stiffness going away, start to decrease the holds, and start to increase the transition. Increase, decrease. Basically just change a bit quicker, okay? So I'm taking it up. Think about that spine, okay? During exercise, if we're under load, as in you've got a bar on your back with weight on it, we don't want the spine to be doing this, of course. We want that spine nice and neutral, nice and tight. However, that spine should still be able to have this movement in it, okay? We, our spine should be able to flow, flow freely. And this is where a lot of us, we lack this movement and this range of movement in our upper backs where thoracic spine gets pretty stiff, okay? So we struggle to move freely, okay? Everything becomes tight again. Modern world, modern way of living, we end up like this and that becomes hard, okay? So relax there, that's another good one. While we're in this position, I'm going, to, I'm going to be moving around a lot today. I don't want you doing that. I'm just going to be moving so you can see me better. And all I'm going to be doing is on all fours again, and I'm going to mobilise what we call the T-spine, the thoracic spine. This range of movement, again, those rotations, it becomes something we don't do very often, so we lose that range pretty quickly, okay? So again, follow on. Plant the hand, same position as before. I'm going to bring the fingertips up to the temple. I call them T-spine salutes, simply because that's what they are. My elbow's out and it's parallel to the ground. And all I want you to do is start rotating from the upper back. Now I'm going to show you from the side. So I'm down, I pause, I come up, I take it as far as I can, I feel that restriction, I try to push through it, squeeze and come back down. Okay, so each time I'm trying to go a bit further, let me show you from the side. Look at my hips on this one, pay attention to the hips. My hips are always facing down, and I'm only twisting that upper back, okay? That thoracic spine's doing the work, I'm not doing this, okay? See how I can now go all the way up, because I've decided to lift my hip? Don't want that. Hips stay neutral. Neutral to the ground, and I'd say, do roughly 10. How do you do this one? Think about lifting that elbow back back, 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 pull it back, and then you get to that point where you're struggling, pause, squeeze, try to take it further, and back down. And you'll find, after you've done a few of them, you'll start to find that your range slowly begins to increase, okay? And that's only just from doing them right now. Throw that into your day, little and often, like I say, and before you know it, you'll be freeing up a lot of range. Now, I'm gonna change sides, so again, I'll start my first few off from the front. So I'm changing sides, I would say do roughly 10, making sure you're getting a good pause. And again, I'm focusing on letting that thoracic spine, that mid upper back, do the rotation, okay? So I don't let the hips lift off. I go back, I squeeze, at that point it starts to feel limiting. Okay, and that's, this is a good stretch for trying to make sense of what I'm telling you about stretching and flexibility. Okay, so you, with, with this one, it's clear as day. You take it to a point, you start to feel it lock up, you can't go any further, yep. Where that is depends on you as an individual. But rather than just give up, as in you don't just go, huh, right, okay, I'm back down. You try to push through it, you try to increase it, that's pretty tough, and then I come back down, okay? So that's kind of what we're trying to do always within these stretches. We're trying to take it further and further and further each time. And that's where it depends on you, relax there. It depends on you, okay? You might be doing this and being like this going, oh, I can barely move. Or someone else might be going a lot further back. As long as you're trying to improve it, as long as you're taking it just slightly outside your comfort zone, you're gonna get better over time, okay? We've all got to start somewhere. A lot of people, like I say, they find these movements or certain movements, especially the ones we're about to go on to, they find them hard, 
So then they just think, oh, I can't do them, or I'm rubbish at them. You've got to start, you've got to put in the work, and you'll get better at them very quickly, I assure you. Right, okay, we're going to get into work in the back. So again, we're going to be working and focusing first part on the upper body, more specifically, the mobility that lets you lift these arms straight up over your head. Okay, so we should be able to do that, keep good form, keep the shoulder blades pulled together as we lift our arms straight above our head. But again, restriction, tightness in the chest and lats, the back muscles, we end up looking more like this, okay, some of us. So when we come to trying to press things up over our head, we start to overextend the spine to compensate, or it just goes to pot and we start to look like this, okay. Either way, whether you've got good overhead mobility or not, this is going to help it and improve it. Right, so we're going to start with which is probably the best upper body stretch in my opinion, and it's simply hanging from a bar. What this is going to do is going to decompress the spine first and foremost, but also we're going to get the chest, shoulders, lats, biceps, everything in the upper body pretty much, even the core is going to get a good stretch here. Now what you do with this is dependent on your grip strength of course, so we're going to be hanging just simply from a bar. If you've got plenty of strength, it's just simple feet away and just let yourself relax into it, okay? Now, if your grip strength's not the best, or your upper body strength's not the best, you don't have to take the feet off. There's no point doing this if you just hang for three seconds and it's hell enough, and then you have to stop. So all we do, if you're tall enough, put the feet on the ground. If you're not, get a bench or a step or something. And all I'm looking to do is just slowly take the weight off my feet, but only as much that allows me to hang there for at least a good minute, okay? Now, I've got the strength to do that. So all I'm going to do is just hang here. Now, when you're hanging, don't fight this stretch. It's very easy to fight this stretch. And what I mean by that is, we look like this, we're all tense. You need to try and focus on just relaxing, making yourself heavy, and feel that pull, okay? So we're keeping the shoulder blades pulled together, and this is where you're going to feel the stretch up here. Okay, the lat's probably one of the tighter areas if you're not used to doing this. You're going to feel it down the arms, you're going to feel it on the chest. You might even feel it on the core, like I said earlier. And all we're looking to do is just hang here for a minute. Now, obviously, if you're doing this at home, you might not have the luxury of a bar, in which case, keep following on with the rest of the stretches that are about to come. But again, just before you warm up, it's always a good idea just to grab a bar and hang from it because it just gets rid of all that tightness in our upper body, especially if you spend a lot of time walking around or sat at a desk like this. It just balances everything out. Next up. So again, if you're a beginner, you're going to feel this one a lot. If you're more advanced with good mobility, you might not feel it so much, but it's still going to feel like it's doing something. Now, all I'm doing is I'm getting the hands out in front of my body. And all I want you to do, we're going to do the same arm at the same time so that we're on the same page, shall we say. I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to put it on top of my right hand. we there. You got me. I'm going to slide my right hand away. And then I'm going to put my right hand on top. Complicated or what, I know. Now, all I'm going to do is start to push my head and my chest through my body. Now, I'm going to move to the side now to show you. Okay, so again, let me talk you through it. Get my hands out in front. I take my left hand, put it on top of my right. Slide my right hand out and then put it on top of my left. So my left hand's coming across my body a little bit. Then, what you do with your lower body is up to you. I'm trying to enhance the stretch. So if you look at me now, on both sides, we're trying to stretch out the lats here, okay? Those back muscles here, we're trying to stretch out. So this is where you do what you can to enhance that stretch, okay? So I'm down. Keep your arms straight and just try to push your weight through, okay? Now, what I don't want you to look like is this, okay? Your arms aren't bent, your arms are straight. You're pushing your arms away from your body and I'm pushing my head and chest through my arms. It's as simple as that, everyone. And again, just like every other stretch, make sure you're not fighting the stretch, as in don't resist it. Don't tense up against it. Try and relax. But also, try maybe adding in some torso twists, okay? Try to twist your torso. Do you feel that helps enhance the stretch? Do you feel it makes it worse? As in, when I say worse, you lose the stretch. So this is where try to get out the mindset, like I said before of just static hold stretches where you're just holding the position. Try to look for ways to increase it. So we're holding it for a good minute. And throughout that minute, you're trying to enhance and take it further and further and further. Now I won't lie, this is pretty uncomfortable now. I've got a damn good stretch on. And as a result, 
I'm going to ease out. Sweat's starting to pour out my face. <laughs> so you'll often find a lot of this, especially when we get to the hips, wait for the hips. Um, you're going to get pretty uncomfortable in some of them. The trick is though, keep drinking water, that's not the trick. The trick is though, trying to stay relaxed, okay? Don't associate your stretching, your mobility work with pain and discomfort. You're trying to stay relaxed in it, okay? If you're fighting it, you're all tense up in these stretches. You're not going to increase your range of movement very well, okay? So bear that in mind. Okay, we're going to the next hand. So if you're not sure, arms out in front. I'm going to take my right hand this time, put it on top of my left, slide my left out, put my left back on top of my right. The reason for that being, okay, if you look at your position now, your right arm's going across your body. That helps enhance one side a bit more, which I'm sure you're going to feel. So we get a wee bit more from that. Which side really depends on you, but it's probably not the side that you're thinking. For me in this position, I'm feeling that straight arm get a better stretch, but again, that might be me because I'm tight on that side. Who knows? Everybody's different. So what am I doing? Again, my lower body, I'm just trying to move away from my hands, okay? I'm keeping my hands in that fixed position. I'm keeping my elbows locked out. So again, this is a good way of, if you don't have access to a bar to hang off of, dead hangs. If you can't do dead hangs because you just have really poor grip strength, then this is a good alternative. But the difference being with those dead hangs, you tend to get a bit more of the chest in, depending on your grip, of course. We get a bit more from the dead hangs. But this is a good way to stretch out your back muscles, more specifically the lats, the big muscles that run up your back, but feel probably more like your armpit side area. Now remember, you're trying to relax, but you're trying to take it further. You're trying to increase the stretch. You're trying to go further and further. Pushing the chest through, pushing the head through, keeping the arms straight. Good. And then I'm coming up out of it slowly, easily. Shake it out, okay? It's always a good idea as well. Woof. Sweat's pouring out me. It's always a good idea. Just stand up, shake out, let the blood flow, because a lot of these stretches we're holding... We restrict the blood flow, okay? If we're really stretching out those muscles, those blood vessels become contracted and the blood doesn't flow as well. And that's another point, okay? You might, the odd time, depending on what we're doing, feel a bit of tingling in your hands or extremities if we're stretching those areas out. And that's where I would say stop, or let the blood flow again, because that's a key sign that the blood's not getting there. Right, this one that we're doing now, it's basically the same kind of stretch. Now, why are we spending a bit of time on this? Because it's very important, that's why. It's as simple as that. This area here tends to be the tightest area in most people that will really restrict them being able to do that. They'll get up to here and that tightness is pulling down, restricts that arm, just straightening out. So we end up again like this or like that or ugh. okay. So like I say, get down, get a bench, get a sofa, anything, okay. It doesn't need to be this height. It could be anything. All I'm trying to do, and I'll show you first, is get my elbows on it and just simply do this stretch here. Same idea, but with the elbows elevated, it lets us get a much better stretch on, okay? You'll really get it deep in the joint, the shoulder on this one. So again, it could be something that height off the ground. Problem being, if you do it on the ground, your face straight away hitting the ground is going to restrict the range that you're going to get, okay? So it doesn't matter what you've got. If you're at home, you've got a sofa. If you're in the gym, you've got a bench. If you're in your garden, use a plant pot or a step. It doesn't matter, okay? So all I'm going to do, I'm getting the triceps on the bench, as in I'm not focusing on having the elbows on the bench, I'm focusing on having the actual meaty part of the muscle on the bench, and then I'm just moving to the edge of the bench, so that when I push through, my head can go lower than the bench. So straight away you kind of see the whole point in this. Now what you do with your arms is up to you, find the best position for them. I'll usually just have my hands clasped, and rather than have them up here, I prefer to pull them back a wee bit because that just helps lengthen out the triceps and just helps get a better stretch on straight away. Okay, so for the main part of this, because you're pushing into a bench, make sure that you're not fighting it. Make sure that you're not actually pushing into the bench. And the best way, like I say, to make that happen is just try to make yourself heavy. Try and make yourself sink into the ground. So make sure you're not just holding it. Make sure you're actually trying to go further. Make sure you're pushing your head and chest through. Where you feel it, it's pretty obvious on this one. Okay, you're going to feel it under your armpits, on the outside of your back. 
that's the lats. You might even feel the chest a wee bit, but again, everybody's different here. Okay, if you're really tight, you're going to really feel this. If you've got good mobility, which I'd like to say I do, then I'm still feeling it, okay? I'm feeling this in a nice way, but then also at the same time, as time goes on and I really push through it because I'm not resting on my laurels. I know my mobility is good enough for a good overhead press, but I want to make it better, okay? So I'm pushing through it. I'm still uncomfortable here. I'm feeling it in the shoulders, feeling it in the back muscles. Okay, and I'm coming out of that relaxing. Now, like I say, this is going to be roughly an hour's video, maybe a wee bit longer of everything. If there's any specific ones you think, oh, if that was good or off, I want to do that one longer. If you're watching it back, obviously, you can just hit the pause button and do them a bit longer. Or make a note, make a physical note, go, oh, yeah, that one. You know, they don't really have a name. They probably do, but I don't really stick with names. We know what they are. You're stretching out your back. It's that, it's that one where your elbow's on the bench. That's usually what I would call it. Okay, nice and professional as always. Um, but, yep, yeah, that's it. Make a note of them and do them again in your own time or spend a bit longer on them than you have to. But for the most part, as long as we're holding them for at least a minute, you're going to get something from it. If not, no point holding these for 30 seconds or less, okay? You're not really spending enough time on there to make your brain think, right, let's open this up a wee bit. Okay, next one, I'm sat down. Okay, this is going to be the last upper body one. Again, there's many, okay? We could spend the whole session, maybe two hours worth of a session on your upper body. But this is aimed at just a general overhaul of everything. So I've picked the best stretches that I think you can do without any equipment, okay? So again, no equipment. That way you can do it anywhere. You've got no excuse, okay? It can't be, oh, I forgot my resistance bands or my foam rollers at home or damn it. You can do this one anywhere you are, okay? So I'm going to put my hands behind my back and I'm going to interlock my fingers with my palms facing away from each other, okay? It's so as simple as that. I don't really need to explain that anymore, do I? Cross back, palms away, interlock the fingers, and then all I'm doing is just getting down onto the elbows, okay? So with this, my elbows are in contact with the ground, my whole forearm's in contact with the ground. Make sure, it might feel a bit odd getting into it, okay? But you'll be fine, get over it. So <laughs> I'm planting the feet on the ground here. Make sure your bum's fairly close to your hands to start with, and then I'm, all I want you to do is get your posture corrected. So make sure the feet are planted, bring the chest up, and make sure the upper back is not just slumped, okay? I'm gonna show you what I want you not to do. I don't want you to look like this, basically, okay? See how I'm just kinda of looking like I'm sitting up on a sun lounger? If that's what you do. I don't, I sit like this, okay? So interlock the fingers, get down, make sure that upper back's nice and straight, okay? And all I want you to do is push the chest up. So where are we feeling it? You're gonna feel it in here. This is the area we're targeting here, chest, shoulder, the area that attach to each other. Now with this one, you don't really need to move far to get the stretch on, but what I want you to do is shift the bum closer to your feet. But when I say closer, I'm actually mean maybe half an inch, and that'll make a hell of a difference. When you move your bum a wee bit closer, make sure you push the chest up. You can play around with the position of your head. If you've got a big heavy head like mine, having it back a bit might help push the chest up more but then make sure you're not straining your neck at the same time. So remember the purpose of the stretch. Remember who we're trying to stretch up chest, shoulder area. So I'm pushing up, trying to relax as best I can those shoulders, trying to relax the weight of my arms into the ground, okay? I'm just gonna keep talking. I'm trying to give you as many pointers, as many hints as I can to get in the right mindset of what we're doing, okay? So I'm feeling that's okay. I could probably go another wee half inch or two. Hoot, okay? Now if you go too far, you'll know because your spine will start curving. As in that lower back, you won't be able to get it up. So try your best, okay? I'm probably not gonna move again because if I move another shift, I'm not gonna be able to keep that lower back straight if I go too far. And if I'm not keeping the lower back straight, I'm not in a good position, okay? So this is one way you might, you might feel this one, your fingers getting a wee bit tingly, as in a bit of, pins and needles, and that's what I would say, don't let that get to the severity of your arms going dead, okay? And everybody, that is us. Okay, I want you to ease out. Ease out slowly. And that is as best we can do with our upper body without any equipment. Like I say, dead hangs at the start of the video. Dead hangs, I think, in my opinion, are one of the best ones you can do. Um, it's getting everything, and you're getting a damn good stretch. You're getting gravity to help stretch everything out, okay? 
but that's not to say these aren't good, but I would just say a dead hang's probably superior. So if you're in a bit of a rush, do your dead hangs. Right, next part, we're moving down to the hips and beyond, okay? Everything that's gonna make your squats, deadlifts, pretty much anything better, okay? Life in general, again, we've got a lot of tightness around here, which we're not starting with, we're gonna finish around the hips. A lot going on here, a lot of muscle groups, a lot of big, powerful muscle groups. This is like the engineer body. So a lot of these get pretty tight. Before we do that though, we're going to stretch out the ankles. Ankles, okay, pretty obvious, but not quite so obvious, the fact that they play a key role in your squats, okay? A lot of people, most people that come through my door have tightness in their ankles to some degree. And that translates to looking, instead of looking like this in a squat, you're gonna end up looking like this. See how my heels are coming off the ground? Okay, and that's simply because as I bend my knee, that ankle joint is also moving. So as I start to bend the knee, if those ankle joints are restricted in mobility, it gets to a point in which the ankles can't move anymore. If the ankles can't move anymore, the knees can't move anymore. If the knees can't move anymore, I end up doing either this when I squat, going forward, or like I say, I manage to stay in form with my upper body, but my heels come off the ground. Now that's gonna wreak havoc on your knees, okay? That's gonna put a hell of a lot of pressure on your knees, or if you're drifting forward, especially with weight on your back, it's going to definitely cause your spine to start curving, if not putting a hell of a lot of stress on your lower back because you're moving way forward to your center of gravity. But anyway, never mind the science lesson. It's simple, you can do this one anywhere. I'm using a beer keg to replicate a wall. You can do it against anything, okay? Now, if you're pretty tight with your ankle mobility, which I'm going to pretend mine is, mine isn't, mine is brown, ha <laughs> ha. Right, okay, so I'm leaning back. I'm leaning back, the purpose of leaning back is that I wanna try and get my toes as far up the wall as I can and also get my heel pretty damn close to the wall, okay? The reason being, if you don't, if you just walk up and go like this and it's pretty tight, you'll start to stretch and if you look at my toes, it's just my toes getting a stretch out, okay? I'm not managing to get, they just slide down the wall. I'm not getting the ankle joint stretched out. So I'm leaning back just to try and anchor my foot in the wall. This is the most important point, okay? You can stretch out the calf muscle, the big calf muscle here, by keeping the knee straight, but we don't want to do that, okay? Chances are your calves aren't that tight. It'll be the ankle joint, all the tendons, ligaments around the actual joint down here. That's what we're trying to address. So we do that by having that kink in the knee, okay? So I'm keeping a nice bend in the knee. I've got that nice bend in the knee, and now I'm just going to start moving close to the wall. Now, your ankles regardless of good mobility, bad mobility, you get to that point in which you're feeling a stretch and you're probably gonna find that your ankles are fine a wee bit. And what I mean by that is you're not relaxed, okay? You're probably pushing your foot into the wall subconsciously. So you're actually not getting a good stretch at all. You're just simply in a horrible stress position. So a good trick with this I like to do on this one is just give it a few bounces, as you can see, three to four. I'm not telling you to bounce it the whole time, but when you do a couple of bounces with the knee, You'll feel straight away if you are fighting it and it'll help identify and help, help you realise that you're not relaxed and it'll help you relax. Hard to explain unless you actually do it and you'll know it straight away what I'm talking about. So a couple of bounces and you'll be like, oh aye, yep, I'm fighting it. Then when you find the stretch, which is pretty easy after that, again, it's trying to feel more down towards the Achilles, down towards the actual heel rather than the calf muscle. Now all I'm doing for the next few minutes is getting up on top of it and I'm trying, okay? I'm simply trying to go from here. Don't you ease out, I'm just showing you. I'm simply trying to increase this range, okay? That forward range. I'm trying to go further and further and further. Now with this one, you can really go for it and you can really make it uncomfortable. If you're face up against the wall, doesn't matter. I'm just going over it there, okay? Doesn't matter. You could, in theory, do it on a stair, but that's what I would say it wouldn't be as superior. It's much better getting something. I like the beer keg because I can really wedge my foot in, okay? But if you find a good wall, and this is where you're probably realizing now, if you've just got your socks on, your foot's just gonna slide down the wall, okay? If you've got stinking, rotten, sweaty feet, they might stick to it, but it's better to have a trainer on. Now, with this one, it's a classic example of take it a little bit further. Focus on your breathing. If you feel like you're fighting it, again, maybe a couple of bounces. We don't bounce the stretches, but a couple of bounces, and this works for pretty much all your stretches. Ones that are pretty awful, ones that are feeling pretty tight and not very nice. A couple of bounces will help you realise that you might be fighting it, okay? You might be on the groin stretch driving your knees into the ground subconsciously. On this, you're probably driving the toes into the ground, just fighting it a wee bit too much. Okay, we're going to ease out it there. 
Now, I want you to walk around because you've restricted that blood flow, like I say, so it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. But we're all right, we're good. So again, you shouldn't be injuring yourself. I should have said that at the start. You should not be injuring yourself doing this stuff, okay? Sure, on movements like this, we're going to get into the next side. We might as well talk while we stretch. Toes up, trying to get the heel close to the wall. Then I'm keeping a slight bend in my knee, and I can tell you now, my left's feeling a hell of a lot tighter than my right, and this is where everybody's different. So straight away, you're going to see what a tight ankle looks like. So straight away, that's feeling pretty restrictive. So I'm trying to find, play around with the position of my body to get a good stretch on. Couple of bounces because I know I'm fighting it, I can feel it, and that's me, I've got the stretch. Now when I say stretch with this one, bear in mind mobility is also the fact that we're trying to mobilise the joints. It might not feel like you're stretching out a long muscle group as such. You might feel a lot of pressure in the joint of the ankle. And that's exactly what we're trying to get here, okay? So get out the mindset of just a nice long muscle group getting stretched all the time. We're trying to mobilise the ankle joint. So that might not feel like what you're used to feeling. Anyway, back to what I was saying about injury. You're putting a lot of strain on your joints here. Yep, agreed, as I'm sure you're feeling at this moment in time holding it for a period of time. Therefore, maybe as the day goes on or tomorrow, you might feel a little bit achy within those joints. That's perfectly normal. But you shouldn't be pulling muscles, okay? You should not be pulling muscles. You should not be taking this to the point in which you start pulling muscles. Sure, you know, we exercise, it happens, injuries happen. You might injure yourself inevitably. But this should not be setting you up to, to, to injury, okay? You take it to the point in which it feels uncomfortable, you hold it there, you try to relax in it, you're trying to take it a wee bit further, but you should not be taking it to the point in which you're pulling muscle groups out or you're damaging your body. Okay, we don't want that, that's not the purpose of this. So with this, I'm trying to get my body up on top of it, I'm trying to get as much of this weight of my body down onto that joint, okay? Now bear in mind, I'm trying to keep that slight bend in my knee, now you can see my face. I'm struggling to keep my face relaxed, but I want you to try and always keep your face relaxed, no matter how uncomfortable it gets. Like I say, you don't want to start associating pain and discomfort with stretching, because then you'll just think, oh, oh no, it's that. Right, I want you to ease out of that slowly. Okay, now that's the simple best way to stretch your ankles out again, because we can get a lot of force down on it. We can really push the range. So that is one I'll recommend. Do it as much as you can. If you're finding that your squats, like I say, if you're f everybody can improve their ankle mobility to some degree, but nine times out of 10, if you're struggling to get right down deep into a squat, it's your ankle mobility that's restricted. Sure, it's you're probably your groin a wee bit as well. If you're struggling to pull your knees apart, you're feeling a strain, strain in your groin, but we'll cover that in a minute. But for the most part, depth is usually limited by the ankles, but most people don't even acknowledge the fact that their ankles um, are involved in a stretch. Now let me show you a trick. You'll know straight away if your ankles are tight because if you elevate your heels, if you find, okay, I've only got one plate, sure, two would be better, but if you find that when you elevate your heels and you squat, that suddenly your, you can see straight away my squat's better, okay? If you find that your squat's a hell of a lot better and all of a sudden you're dropping down into rock bottom depth where you feel your bum pretty much sitting on your heels, that's a key indicator that your, your ankles are tight, okay? That is the key indicator that your ankles are tight. So if you feel that the plate, book, or anything that you can elevate your heels on improves your squat drastically, get working on your ankle mobility, okay? Sure, when you're first starting out, you might find yourself propped up doing a lot of the kind of main exercises with your heels elevated, but that's not something we should be happy in accepting, okay? That's just to get us going, that's to get the ball rolling a bit quicker. We're striving to be able to hit good depth with our heels on the ground. Now, runners especially, I'm not just pointing at runners in general, but runners especially, we spend a lot of time, you know, in a very restricted, very short range of movement when we're running. So our body really tight, ties up tight. And again, a lot of people that I experience, you can see straight away at boot camps, etc., out there, People that run, you can see straight away, oh, they, they do a lot of running because their squats are usually awful. And again, that's no harm to you, but your ankles just seize up big time and you don't take care of them. Groin as well, okay, but we're gonna get into that. Anyway, that's your lecture over for today. Next up, kneeling, groin stretch. This is one where you can really take it uncomfortable. I'm gonna quickly show you from the front how to set up. So get a good mat for this one. Um, and I'm going to show you from the side because the side is going to show you how to do the stretch, but the front I'm going to show you how to set up. So all I want you to do is get your knees as wide apart as you can, okay? 
Groin, sure, there's more than one muscle group. It's not your groin, it's not called your groin. The groin is the area, but I'm all into that, okay? I'd rather just say groin than start to try and shout out muscle groups because what's the point in that? So I'm pulling the knees apart, okay? So straight away, you're probably going to feel a bit of a stretch in here. This is where if you've got crappy shots on, you're going to realize that you wore the wrong ones today. So all I want you to do is start shifting the weight backwards. Now, now you can see me from the front. Let me show you from the side so you can see exactly what I'm trying to do here. Knees wide apart. My foot is behind my knee. What I mean by that is they're not like this. Okay, I want to imagine that I'm trying to get my bum between my feet. So the feet need to be apart for that, okay? Now, what I want you to do, you can have the arms out in front if you like, or you can just rest on the elbows. But the purpose of this is I'm trying to pull my knees apart. This is where you'll probably find you go a wee bit further. But I'm trying to push my hips that way. Okay, I'm trying to push my hips that way. Does that make sense? I'm sure it does. Okay, so all I'm doing, I'm going from here. Trying to push my hips back, 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 pulling my knees apart at the same time. Find that initial stretch. What I mean by that is that point in which you think if I go any further, it's going to get right uncomfortable. I want you to hold it there now. I want you to focus on your breathing. I want you to make sure you're not driving your knees into the ground anymore. Remember what I said about being heavy, completely relaxing into these. Now with this, I prefer to just rest on my elbows. Now I've not got a lot of weight on my elbows. I've got most of the weight pushing down through my knees. But you can also have your arms out in front if you prefer. It really depends on what you prefer, okay? Neither's better or worse, it's whatever works for you. I like to stay on here because it gives me a chance to just focus on that groin, okay? Personally, when I put my arms out there, I then start to think too much about stretching the upper body, okay? So from here, I can stay fairly relaxed in the upper body and focus on a good stretch in the groin. Now this one is horrible, okay? You can really go for this one. So every so often, I'm going a wee bit further. Now, you'll be surprised at how far you can probably go, but again, test the water just a wee bit at a time. Okay, I'm not easing in and out. I'm not coming out of it because it's uncomfortable. I'm holding it at the point it's uncomfortable. I'm getting a good stretch. I'm focusing on my breathing. And then I take it a wee bit further, and I do the same again there. And I keep taking it further and further and further. Now, your groin. Groin gets pretty damn tight, okay? And it's an area that, again, is going to restrict your squats, deadlifts, etc. Now, squats more specifically, when you're squatting down, you're trying to pull the knees apart. If your groin's tight, when you get to a certain point in your depth of your squat, if your groin's tight, you're not going to be able to pull the knees apart. Now, if you're unable to pull the knees apart, that's going to restrict your depth straight away, okay? But also, if you continue to try and go down, it's going to start pulling your knees back in the way, okay? Your knees are going to start caving in, and that's not good. That's not good for our knees. So the groin plays a huge part in our squats as well. So you'll know straight away, if you're trying to squat to depth and you feel your groin's getting pretty tight towards the bottom, this is the one for you, okay? Take it further, everybody. This is the last shift. Now, you could spend as long as you want. You could do this for five minutes if you like, okay? Now, this is one I'll probably say to you that you should extract and throw in at the beginning of your warm-up. It's certainly one I like to do before I start squatting. And that's where you might have... You know, I'm all for a generic same warm-up, but see, before I warm up, I always throw in a few stretches. But I'll always throw in stretches specific to what I might be training. So if I was about to squat, I'd have this. I'd have a bit of ankle work. Good, and I want you to slowly ease out of this, everybody. Now, when I say slowly, you're going to have no probably any choice because it's uncomfortable coming out of this one. Remember, we're just straight as you're probably getting up going, Ugh. or maybe that's just me. I'm not really selling this, am I? Who is this guy? Okay, so when you get up, you might feel a little bit of kind of uncomfortness. Uncomfortness, that's not even a word. Discomfort in the groin area, okay? If that's you, walk around, shake it out, okay? Maybe even crack a few squats. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. Again, keep sipping that water. So let me explain now what we're doing there. So as a squat, this isn't a squat lesson. That's not what this is for. I'm squatting, I'm pulling my knees apart. As I pull my knees apart, obviously the groin's getting a good stretch out in there, okay? Now, if I was restricted in there, if it was feeling tight, I'd maybe get to a certain point. I wouldn't be able to pull my knees apart, they'd start to cave in. Or, I just wouldn't go any further, okay? Now, the importance of being able to pull your knees apart is it'll let you get your hips down further without causing you to tilt forward more, okay? So it helps you get more depth out your squat, but keeps you still in that center of gravity without throwing you forwards. Next up, we're going to attack the groin a wee bit more, but we're going to attack it in more of a specific way 
that you would be squatting, okay? And that's going to make sense in just a second when we get into this one. Getting into a lunge position. I'm going to talk you through it from the side and front. Again, I'm going to be moving around. You're not moving around, you're static holds. Big lunge forward, get your left leg out in front of you. We'll all do the same leg that way, we all know what we're doing. Pin the foot with a hand, get the other hand in line with the foot, and then all I'm doing, now there's many variations of this, okay, but this isn't yoga, this isn't Pilates, this is my version, okay, and all again I'm trying to do is I'm trying to focus on the area, the target area that I'm after, okay, so I'm not trying to do a full body kind of thing and bring a bit of strength into it, I'm simply trying to mobilise my groin here. Now from the front that's what I look like, from the side this is what I look like now, okay, so you can see that leg is pretty much central to my body, that back leg is central to my body, okay, and all I want you to try and do is push the hips down and force the chest up, now from the side I'm, I'm liking to think that my back's pretty straight, but I can tell you now that took a bit of time, okay, that took a bit of time to be able to achieve that, when I first discovered this stretch I was like this, trying to get my chest up, trying to get my back straight and it just wasn't happening, if that's you, like I say, you'll be at that point, as long as you're trying to push through it and you're trying to enhance it, eventually each time you'll get a wee bit further and further and further and further and further until you can get down there. Now when I'm down here now, I'm not just chilling out, I'm still taking the stretch further. I'm able to go further into it. Now I'm going to move back to the front so again I can talk you through this bit. So for the first part, it's just getting a good stretch on. Where do you feel it? Should be feeling it in the groin, okay, but you might feel it in the hip flexor of that back leg, okay. So I'm pushing down and I'm pushing up. That's the first part. Now, if you look at the leg that's out in front of you, the position of the hips, the position of that hip joint, the femur in the hip, that's replicating being at the bottom of a squat, okay? Think about it. Oh, aye, so it is. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Yep, I'm trying to replicate being at the bottom of a squat with one leg. So from here, we can now really start going for it. So I'm continuing to push my hips down. I'm gonna twist away from my knee. But as I twist away from my knee, I'm only enhancing this, okay? I'm not making it easier, I'm making it worse. But when I say worse, I really mean better, and you know that. Okay, so I'm pushing the hips down, and I'm forcing the chest up. If you start to move away and you lose the stretch, it's definitely because you've lifted the hips up. Keep pushing them down, keep pushing them down, keep pulling that knee apart. If you're not sure, you can push the knee apart physically with your hand, okay? And then you'll know if you're doing it right or wrong and then come back, and this is exactly what I mean, and this is a classic example of maneuver around within your stretch, okay, don't just hold a static stretch, you can do a lot within it. Now I'm going to try and move my chest towards my ankle, like this. If you've got fairly good mobility, you could drop the elbow and get really down there, but all I'm trying to do is get that chest towards the ankle. If you can't drop the elbow, it doesn't matter. What I don't want you to do is drop the elbow and make the stretch crap, okay, I want you to keep going further and further, Chest towards ankle. You can come back up. Force the chest up. Good work, everybody. This is it. This, this is an uncomfortable one, but you can get a hell of a lot from it. I'm going to ease out. Now, again, we're keeping it fairly brief today, as in, you know, holding the stretch for one to two minutes max. There's no reason why you can't spend three to four to five minutes in this one, because there's a lot to be had from this one. And again, to be honest with you, this is one of my favourite stretches um, for the groin and for mobilising for squats, etc. So I'm pinning that, I'm changing legs. I won't bother showing you from the side this time. So that back leg is central to my body. And play around with the position. Now make sure you're not on the fingertips. Make sure you're not on the knuckles, okay? We've evolved from that. Get the, f get the floor. <laughs> get a hand planted flat on the floor. There we are. Okay, don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself thinking, oh, I can do it. My back's straight, but you're up on the fingertips. Plan and try to get better by doing it properly. Okay, so for the first part, I'm pushing my hips down and I'm forcing my chest up at the same time. When I say forcing the chest up, you remember that one where we were going like that at the start on all fours? That's all I'm trying to do, except I'm pushing through. That's what I mean by bringing the chest up. Trying to get that neutral spine and maneuver into this position in a neutral spine. Now, it might be impossible to get that neutral spine because you're pretty tight or your mobility is not great somewhere. You'll probably know because you'll feel it. But as long as you're trying to push through it, as long as you're trying to stretch out those muscles, 
then you're going to get better over time, okay? Now, I'm twisting away again gradually, pushing the hips down, pulling the knee apart. Good. Great work. So again, I'm twisting, but my knee's getting pulled apart, and by twisting away, I'm really enhancing it, as you can see by my face. I am not taking away from it. I can come back, and then go the other way. I'm trying to get my chest towards my, my heel, my ankle, but I can get better. If I get my, my elbow dropped down, I can really go for it, okay? Now, you're pretty clear as to what you're trying to stretch here, because you're going to feel it. But make sure, like I say, you're relaxed. Make sure you're not fighting the stretch. And then I'm coming back to the middle. And then I'm coming back out of it again. You could spend a lot longer in that stretch. You could spend a lot longer explore. I say exploring, but that's exactly what you're doing. Exploring your own body, okay? Trying to find little pockets of tightness. Trying to work through it, manipulate through those little pockets of tightness. A bit like you would do if someone was giving you that massage, okay? They find that blooming, what do you call it? Brain fart. Brain fart. Not... They find that knotted up area, okay? And then you get something more specific, like your elbow, to get stuck into it. Right, next up, get your sofas ready. If you don't have a sofa, use a bench. If you don't have a bench, use a chair. If you don't have that, you can go up against a wall, but make sure you've got a good bit of matting, okay? If you're using your sofa, you're probably gonna find you've got cushions. If you don't, poor old you, okay? So this one, this is important. You've got a good bit of cushioning for your knees because you don't want to be putting your knee on a hard surface with this one, okay? If you've only got a mat or you've got a yoga mat or something, you know, initiative would say roll it up. Roll it up a wee bit, make it a bit thicker. Double it over, triple it over, anything. As long as your knee's comfortable, okay? That's the main thing here. Now, what am I doing? Very quickly, I'll get into the position to show you. You can do this stretch without elevating the foot, okay? So you can see my foot's elevated. You can do the stretch, hip flexor stretch, without it, but you're not gonna get anywhere near as good a stretch if you don't elevate the foot. Now this is what I mean, you can go up against the wall. There's no harm in going up against the wall. It's probably just a hell of a lot more uncomfortable. Okay, so I'm getting the foot elevated. Now it's important that if you look at my leg, you've got to try and get the knee pretty close to the wall as well, otherwise it defeats the purpose. If you've got your foot elevated and your knees are way out here, kind of defeats the purpose a wee bit here, okay? So get the knee, and then get this leg forward. Now this is where I'm going to talk you through it in stages, okay? So straight away, for some people with, with not so good mobility, I don't like to say crap, because it's not crap. Yeah, you're trying to make yourself better, <laughs> but it is, it's crap. If you're struggling here already, you're crap, I'm only kidding. So I'm struggling. First part, I'll be trying to get my body up straight, okay? But straight away, I'm feeling tightness in the quads and tightness in the hip flexor. So my hips are starting to compensate now. My hips are sitting like this, okay? I've got one hip bone here and one hip bone here. First part of that is I'm trying, I'm gonna try and reset my hips. And when I say that, I'm trying to stretch out the area, pin it, and try to bring those hip bones back into line, okay? You might be leaning forward for this, that's okay. But for the first part, I'm trying to get those hips, try to get that tightness out so that my hips become in line. You'll know what I mean, because if you're doing it and you're feeling pretty tight, you'll feel one side of your hips really high. Try and get your hips in line as best you can. And then I'm starting to push my hips through. So this angle here, I'm trying to push it that way. I'm trying to straighten it out. Okay, so I'm getting on top of that knee and I'm pushing through. So this is predominantly a hip flexor stretch, hip flexor being in here. Okay, but you're probably going to feel it in your quads if those are tight. For me, I'm feeling it in my quads. Okay, I won't lie to you now, I'm feeling it in my quads. So you can do this one with a sofa, you can do it against a wall, it doesn't matter. But having this foot elevated, you take the stretch to a whole new level. You don't have to have the foot elevated, but you'll feel the difference if you don't. So what am I doing? To enhance this stretch, I'm trying to squeeze my glutes. Okay, squeeze the butt through, trying, because when you squeeze the butt, it's going to push your hips through naturally anyway. So all I'm trying to do is straighten myself up, push the hips through this way, the body through that way. And you know exactly what you're trying to do, because all I'm trying to do is enhance the stretch that I'm holding. 
Again, if your hips are out of line, because they're severely tight, as in it's tight here and it's pulling it, just try your best. Try your best to get the hips in line as you're pushing through, which won't be easy if you're tight, but that's what I mean by little and often. The more you do this, as long as you're trying to take it further and further and further, you're gonna get better, okay? It's not enough to say, oh, this is hard, this is really uncomfortable, I'm not gonna bother doing it. That's a loser's attitude, okay? Everybody can do all of these, unless of course you're carrying injuries. In which case I would say to you, do not make that injury worse. Okay, I'm gonna change legs. Now again with that one, if you're feeling really tight on that one, it's gonna take you a few before you actually feel like you're getting much from it. So again, if you think that stretch could do with a bit more work or you'd like to spend a bit more time, hit the pause button. Hit the pause button if you've got the beauty of doing so or make a mental note and start doing it more often. For me right now, left side is a hell of a lot tighter than the right. Why is that? Who knows? Okay, we could go into all sorts of theory behind it, but all I know is I need to spend a bit more time on that left side for now. So again, right side, I'm feeling I can get into a better position a bit quicker. I don't have that so much tightness as I do on the other side. But then at the same time, check the position of your knee. Make sure the distance from the wall that your knee is is the same on both sides. Okay, no point getting into one and going, God, this side's so much easier. But your wall's three inches eh, away from your knee more than the other side was. Okay, so that's important. Try to have consistency with how far your knee is from the wall. Okay, so again, to enhance this stretch, I'm trying to push my butt through. Try to keep myself nice and tall, nice and proud. Squeeze the glutes, okay? Squeeze the glutes. And you'll feel that stretch all the more. Okay? So we're getting through it. Hip flexors, I'm going to explain this one. Hip flexors get pretty damn tight because when we sit down, pretend I'm sat down with this leg while we're talking. So imagine I'm sat down. Hip flexor in this position is shortened, whereas, whereas this side... This side is lengthened because I'm stretching it out. So in this shortened position, it's relaxed. Okay, so then when I try to stretch it out, it's gonna be even tighter because I've sat down all day. It's got used to this nice shortened position that it's now relaxed in because I've been sat down. I'm no longer needing to put weight on it. So then when I try to straighten it out, when I try to straighten it out, it's got a bit of tightness in it, okay? It can't quite get there. So as a result, my pelvis, doesn't it quite sit properly. So then you end up looking a bit like this, okay? Again, I'm emphasizing it a wee bit, but this is where you end up getting the butt, okay? We call interior pelvic tilt, uh, where your butt starts sticking out a wee bit, okay? Again, for some reason nowadays, people seem to think that's a good look and they actually enhance it. Don't know why, um, beats me. But you're putting a hell of a lot of strain on your lower back, okay? We don't want to be doing that. You certainly don't want to be encouraging it. And that's why, again, with squats, the cue that people give on a squat to stick your bum out is the worst cue in the world. Um, we don't want to be sticking our bum out on a squat. We shift the hips back as a whole. If you try to stick your bum out on a squat, put that back in, overextension straight away, and as I go down, I'm just going to enhance that. See that overextension, that inward curvature of my spine? That's bad, okay? That's all stress we don't want, but unfortunately there's people out there telling people, stick your bum out when you squat. Don't, just don't, take it from me. Right, okay, there's that one over. Didn't even know where that came from. Enhanced glutes now. Right, glutes, okay. So, glutes, big powerful muscle group, etc., etc. It works hard, but it gets forgotten about, okay? It gets real tight, and that's going to translate in a lot of the times to feeling that there's tightness in your lower back that might not quite be your lower back. It might well be your glutes. So I'm getting that leg out 90 degrees in front of me. I'm going to pin it with a hand. It's important you pin it with a hand because we don't want that foot to slide. If you're real tight as you get up on top of it, you'll find that that foot wants to slide in and then you're going, God, I'm great at this. I'm not even feeling anything here. Okay, and that's because that foot slid in. So get it out, 90 degrees, pin it, get up on top of it. And that back leg, I'm just trying to shift to the center of my body like so, okay? So it's similar to that uh, warrior lunge, the groin one we've done in that lunging position. So I'm trying to keep my knee pinned to the ground and I'm trying to keep my foot pinned to the ground. And this is where you'll see me fidget a lot. I'm not fidgeting. I'm trying to find the best position to get into, okay? Once I find a good position, this is where you might struggle. If it's real tight, you'll probably be away up here like I am just now going, oh, okay? 
but all I want you to do, and this is probably one that you'll most definitely find that you are fighting. If it is tight, you'll probably find this knee driving into the ground to try and take the stress off this hip, okay? And that's where you need to think to yourself, pin the foot, relax, okay? And it's hard, it's hard to relax, but you're trying to make yourself sink into the ground. Now where you feel it, most probably, most definitely is on that hip glutes, okay, that outward hip. If you're not feeling it there, check your foot position. Is your foot position still at 90 degrees or is it swung back a bit? Now to enhance it, if you're feeling that, you know, yeah, this is all right now, that initial tightness has eased off a bit, you can get down lower, okay, get down onto the elbows and you can really push down into that knee and into that foot, okay? Now that's me telling you if you're able to go a bit further. If you're not, is then if you're up here struggling, there's no sense in going all the way down here then going <laughs> and shaking. If you're shaking, it's because your muscles are tense, okay? We don't want that. We want to be relaxed. Okay, I'm going to change legs. <laughs> Good. Going to change legs again. We're not holding these as long as I would normally hold them, but we're holding them long enough to get a good bit of work from them anyway. But I would always say with these, if you find ones that work, hold it for two to three minutes. A minute's enough, but two to three minutes is better, okay? And throughout that time, you're trying to take it further and further and further. Again, for me, this right side now, it's feeling a bit tighter than the left. Again, everybody's different, that's what I mean by that. I'm just trying to enhance, highlight, should I say, the point that, you know, you might well find that one side's a bit tighter than the other, one side's a bit more difficult. Now with this one, I would definitely say, if you're tight, you'll probably find your knees off the ground. I would tr strive to get your knee on the ground first, okay, then start to enhance it, okay, rather than be up here trying to go down, try and get the knee on the ground first, okay, that might be hellish for you up here, if it's not, you can go a bit further, okay, but again, this is a toughie, if you're not in the habit of doing this one, this is a real toughie, and it's... Another way you can do it is if you look at the position of my leg, you could put it up on a table. If you've got a table that's, I don't know, your hip height, if you walk up to a table and it's your perfect hip height, you can whack this leg up on a table and do the same kind of thing, okay? But again, no need for a table when you can do it like this. We're going to ease out of it there. Good. The last and final stretch, and another important one, is your hamstrings, okay? Now, this is where... I did say to you, we're going equipment free on this because it lets you do it anywhere. Now, no matter where you are, you probably got a towel. Okay, now this is where if you've got a resistance band, I want you to use a resistance band. But I'm showing you this one last because it is equipment free. But this is definitely an important one that we can't miss out, okay? It's important that I mention this one to you. So when you are in the gym or if you've got resistance bands at home, or worst case scenario, a towel works fine, and I'm going to show you now, okay? I'll show you one side with the towel. And in fact, I'll not even bother showing you my resistance band because we don't even need it. A resistance band will just make it easier on your arms, okay? Your arms won't get as tired as they will do holding a towel because there's plenty of flex in a resistance band. I'm sat down, okay? And all I'm going to do is get my towel or my resistance band. If you're using a resistance band, you're going to need a thick one, like a purple or green one, okay? No point using a wee red one because you're just not going to have enough strain in it. I'm going to hook it round the ball of my foot, okay? Now, I'm pretty sure you know what the ball of your foot is, but just in case you don't, it's where your toes connect into the main part of your foot is what I would say to you. Um, and the reason for that is when you pull the towel, those toes get pulled towards you. When you pull the toes towards you, you're going to stretch out the muscles up the back of your leg before you've even started going into this. So straight away, you're getting a better and more effective stretch. Now, all I want you to do is go back. This is where, you know, I'm starting to realize I should have had a bigger toe. But I'm back into this position. Now, with the hamstring stretch, it's important your knees locked out on this one. Okay, that's the most important part. Do not have that knee soft. Lock the knee out. And then from here... All I'm trying to do is keep pulling this band down. This is where it's easier if it's a resistance band. If it's a towel as short as mine, those arms are going to get tired. Okay, now I want you to try and move the leg further and further and further and further and further back. And this is where you'll be surprised maybe at how much you can actually go that you're not going. As then you might think, this is so uncomfortable. 
but you can still go further, okay? Now, you're trying to relax. Yes, it's going to get uncomfortable. The leg that's on the ground, if you observe mine, it's straight, okay? That's important. Don't be like this. Get it straight. Get it completely straight and relaxed. Take this one. I'm constantly trying to take it further. Don't even ease out. The knee's locked out. I'm moving it further. I'm moving it further. You may well be here and going, oh my word, it's going to snap. But you're seeing me here again. I just keep on top of this a bit more. Keep on top of it. Keep trying to go further. And before you know it, you'll get further. Okay? And like I say, I'm not resting on my laurels. I'm trying to go further. I'm taking it to the point it's uncomfortable for me. Not like my mobility is something to be in awe of. Okay, and we're going to ease out of it. Now, I want you to be able to hold this for long. Okay, I'm just throwing this in at the end. That there is very important to have, okay? If your hamstrings are tight at the bottom of a squat when they're trying to stretch out a little bit, you're going to find if they're tight, they're not able to. And that's when your pelvis starts getting pulled forwards, okay? We don't want that. And also on deadlifts, if you're trying to do a deadlift and you're trying to set up, and just before you lift it off the ground, when you're trying to get your chest up and get your back nice and straight, you're unable to get it straight and you feel everything's tight. Hamstring mobility is very important for that movement as well, okay? But like I've said before, a lot of people are quick to say they've got tight hamstrings. Oh, my hamstrings are tight. I always pull my lower back out because I've got tight hamstrings. And then a lot of the time, it turns out that it's not the hamstrings that's tight after all, okay? It could be the glutes, it could be the groin. So if you're able to get your leg up, look at mine, roughly 90 degrees to the floor, that's a good bit of range you've got there, okay? That, that's what I would say you're striving for as a beginner. Anything more is better, but you're trying to strive to have that body at 90 degrees, okay? And be able to hold it there and it not feel too uncomfortable. But again, I'm trying to take it further and I'm trying to make it better. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's a lot of different things we can do. We can introduce resistance bands, foam rollers, etc. But the purpose of this is to allow you to do it anywhere, okay? And I've picked all the most superior exercises, in my opinion, for each target area that we're after. So that's a full body mobility overhaul. Hope you enjoyed it. Sure, there's other exercises, other movements, etc., that we could do, but we're gonna be here for three hours. You do that as much as you can, you're gonna get better. You're gonna find that your lifting improves. You're gonna find that your movement improves. You'll probably find the aches and pains or tight lower back or pain here and there when you're sat down starts to slowly fade out. But as always, mobility is not really something that you conquer, in my opinion. It's something that you're always striving to get better at. The more you exercise, the stiffer you'll be after it, etc. You're always fighting it in many ways. Um, but keep on top of it. It's just as important as your exercise. Like I said at the start, there's a few in there that you might have found were really hard. Make a mental note of them, write them down, and throw them maybe into your warm-up. Like I say, before I do any sort of training, I'll usually do maybe three static stretches that I know are either specific to what I'm about to train, or I know that I'm not very good at, okay? And that's how you get better. For a lot of people, busy lives, etc., me included, it'd be great if we could sit, well, maybe if we're in lockdown again for the rest of our life, so you've got all the time in the world. But for most people, the thought of spending an hour to do mobility when they could be doing an hour's workout when they're already pushed to get their training in during the week anyway, they'll end up choosing to do a workout. So if that sounds like you, because we're realistic here, and that's probably more like me, pick out the ones that you're struggling with and throw them into your warm-up. That way you're hitting two birds with one stone, as they say. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it helps. It definitely will help to get it done. Thank you.